unfortunately, we can't say a whole lot about gene flow between Neanderthal and humans uh, with the limited amount of sequence data we have. Um, this is a, a question that we're very interested in and everyone is very interested in. Um, and one, of, one aspect of this question that has been kind of uh, neglected in the past that we perhaps can address now uh, as more sequence comes in is uh, not only was there uh, gene flow from Neanderthals into modern humans, that is, do we have some Neanderthal genes within us, but also was there gene flow between modern humans into Neanderthal? And the, the, uh, this question is pretty much um, unaddressable without getting Neanderthal genome sequence itself. And people have been wondering about the source of the differences between these two people. Neanderthals and humans looked very different. You, you can't see this from the skulls particularly, but Neanderthals had very large noses, very big brow ridges, and actually they had larger brains on average than modern humans. But there are a lot of other things that the genes might shed light on in the future. And that is uh, one of these things is the origin of language. There has been a lot of debate about whether Neanderthals could use language. Um, uh, there's been a lot of reconstructions of their throats. Some people think they uh, had very deep voices. I heard one anthropologist said that um, in a Neanderthal choir, Barry White would be the tenor. One implication of getting a Neanderthal genome sequence is it would be a complete genome from an extinct species, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing is that uh, we will be able to uh, pinpoint the genetic differences that happened on the hominid lineage, on our lineage, in the last few hundred thousand years when uh, traits such as um, uh, cultural transmission and our um, spreading throughout the world and, and uh, replacing all other hominids in the world happen. And there are likely to be um, uh, biological differences that allowed humans to do this and we hope to be able to find these with uh, comparison to Neanderthal. If, uh, if this chap had actually bumped into this chap what would they have said to each other? Now we do know that Neanderthals and humans lived in Europe for, um, they coexisted for a few thousand years before the Neanderthals uh, eventually died out. Now nobody knows if the process was warlike and catastrophic or, as I think most people t tend to think, that um, Neanderthals died out quite slowly because humans were better at exploiting the resources and even in a very very small way over a, a few thousand years that would make a difference but would they have recognized each other yeah. L literature is actually a, a probably better better guide than science i think what what most uh, i think if uh, primitive peoples met other primitive peoples they would have just seen them as other primitive peoples rather than a distinct species they also show something extremely interesting which is a rather rarefied genetic term called effective population size. It's an expression of all those human beings who survived to leave descendants. Uh, and um, uh, what happens is, uh, this is conditioned by two things. One is that most people eventually die out without having left any progeny within a generation or two. Um, and there are a few people who've left lots of progeny. And the other thing is that a uh, uh, low effective population size shows that populations were, for most of the life of the species, very small and given to very large expansions and contractions, um, indicative of migration around the planet. Now, apes, who, you know, particularly chimpanzees, who've lived in Africa and haven't moved away forever, have actually quite large effective population sizes. Human beings have always been interesting in that they have small ones, and now we have just enough DNA from Neanderthals to show quite convincingly that they too had small effective population sizes. So um, hominids seem to have lived for million, millions of years clinging on by their fingernails and being buffeted here and, here and there by, by fate. But I think the most important thing about this research is not what it's achieved, but what it promises. The new technique makes it feasible for the entire Neanderthal genome to have been sequenced within a couple of years. Now, that would be an incredible prize to have.